Next day I'm in the airport leaving Russia and my pockets are filled with Russian money that's going to be worth nothing. And I thought, in a second, it's worth nothing. How foolish I was. Because here, it doesn't matter if it was overpriced. Right now, it's nothing. I've got nothing. He who sows sparingly will reap sparingly. He who sows abundantly will reap abundantly. Each must do as he has purposed in his heart, not grudging, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a joyful, cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that always having all sufficiency in everything, you may have an abundance for every good deed. As it's written, He who scattered abroad and gave to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for the food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. And you will be enriched in everything for all liberality which through us is producing thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of the service is not only fully supplying the needs of the saints, but overflowing through many thanksgivings to God. Amen. Amen. The season that we're in right now on the biblical calendar or the calendar of Israel is the the time or the season of sowing. You see when you finish what's the, what the last festival we had? The last holy day holiday is what? It was tabernacles. Tabernacles finished in the beginning of, of October. Actually the very last day of this celebration is when calamity came to Israel and the thing is that right after this happens, right after tabernacles, that's closing up the harvest. It's the feast of ingathering. So you're finishing, you're giving thanks to God. We got our thanksgiving from tabernacles. We're a little late with it, but that's what tabernacles is. That's what thanksgiving is. Because they gave thanks for all the harvest. But then you begin the next harvest. And so this season is the season of sowing seed, sowing into the soil. Because then what happens is you've got a time where the rains come, and so the rains water the seed, and you also have a time it gets colder. Everybody goes inside, but the seeds are down there. And then when the, when the weather warms up in, in the springtime, you have all this, you have the harvest begins with Passover. So what you sow in the autumn, you reap in the spring. This is the time of sowing. And so in Hebrew, the word for sowing is the word zara. Try it. Zara means to sow. To sow. And the thing is that we're going to talk from this principle of the kingdom of sowing, and there is so much in this that touches every part of life, of your life. It can change your life. It can transform your life. It is a law of the kingdom. So first, an, uh, some key foundational laws of the kingdom regarding sowing. Number one, and you know you've heard this, of course, but there's so much to it. You reap what you sow. In the natural, of course, you know, if you plant, you know, you plant in, in, uh, wheat in the spring, in the, in the harvest, or the sowing time, in the harvest time, you reap wheat. You don't reap oranges. Because whatever you sowed, you reap. You will reap what you sow. So what that means in life, spiritually, see, you, if you're born again, you are spiritual children of Israel. You're a citizen of Israel. So you also sow, you know, in Israel they sowed. You sow, but you sow in the Spirit. You sow in other things. But we all have to be sowers. Whether we've ever sowed a seed or not, you are a sower. So the thing is, what you sow in your life, you will reap. You'll reap forever. You'll also reap many things now as well. Number two, if you don't sow, you will not reap. So if you're not reaping, it's because you didn't sow. That's a law of the kingdom. You have to sow or you don't reap. Next law of the sowers, the sower is one who affects his surroundings or her surroundings. Goes into the field, the field is barren, nothing's in the field, sows the seed, 
That next, that next spring, that whole field is transformed because of what the sower did. So the sower is one who transforms his or her surroundings or world. We are called to touch the world, not just be in the world and not be of the world. We're called also to touch the world. We're not to live our lives reacting to the world, reacting to whatever happens, reacting to every circumstance. We are here to affect every circumstance, to affect the world, to change it. We are to be that. Think about Messiah. Messiah's life was not primarily that he's reacting to everything going on. He's acting upon the world more than anything else. You are called more than anything else to act upon the world. You are a sower. A sower has the power to transform the world. You know, I mean, literally, you take, a, you take a field that's barren, all of a sudden it becomes a transformed field. You have the power to do that in the world. A barren world to transform the world. Transform. We are not on earth to complain about the situation. We are here to transform, touch the situation, transform the situation. You're working on a job. You're not there just to work and to get money. That's what I'm here to get. No. You're there while you're working, not only to do your best job, but also to be sowing for God. When I worked on a job, I would share the gospel, you know, in, in a way that worked. I would share the gospel on that job. And I, that's, I saw several people, many people, come to the Lord through that. You are supposed to be doing that wherever you go. Next key, sowers transform their surroundings by giving. The act of sowing is the act of giving. They're, you're giving to the earth. Sowers don't take from the field. They give to the field. Earth is our field. This life is our field, is your field. You are not on in this field to primarily take from the field. You're here to give to the field, give to every situation. You'll get You'll get blessing, but your job, your aim, your heart has to be, I'm here to bless. I'm here to give. I don't need from this world. I need from God. I got from God. I'm here to bless the world. Next key, sowers not only give, they give life. A seed is a, a form of life. And so when you give a seed, you're giving life. So if you're a sower, you are on earth to give life, to give hope to give encouragement, to give faith, to give blessing, to give life. What is the seed, the primary seed, the first seed that you are to give? The first seed that you're to give is the Word of God. Amen. The Bible says the Word is seed. The seed in the parable, when the Lord talked about the parable of the sower, He said what? The seed is the Word of God. How is the seed a Word of God? Or seed is a symbol of the Word of God? Well, think about it. A seed is this, this, uh, this object that has life in it. The Word of God has life in it. The seed has genetic DNA, has DNA in there. That's in there that is going to then produce. Well, the Word of God has the essence of God in it. The Word of God has the nature of God in it. It has, it has and so it, it's life. There's life. And seed is life in potential form. You can, amazing thing is you can have a seed, you know, sometimes they discover these things when they do archaeology. They discover these ancient uh, vessels that have seeds in them from like the days of Egypt, 2,000, 3,000 years ago. And you can take that seed and plant it and it becomes a living thing. So it's potential. We want to talk about that. But you are to sow. So you've got the Word of God. You're to sow it. In evangelism, every single believer is to be sharing the gospel. Every single one. And if you don't, don't complain about what's happening in America if you're not doing something about it. But here's something we don't often think about. Say you're, what? Well, yeah, but I'm going through, I'm not thinking about sowing. I'm going through a problem. That's all I'm thinking about. I'm going through that situation. Well, how about sow to the problem? The problem doesn't, it's not supposed to stop you from sowing. The problem, when someone goes to a field that's got no life, that's a problem. They sow to it. Sow to your problem. You're in the midst of a problem. Sow to it. Sow God's Word. Sow God's love. You know, you're in an argument. Sow God's Word. Go, sow His love in the middle of it. See what happens. 
You know, sometimes you hear on the radio, I don't, you know, they have these shows, or you see it on, online or on television. They have these financial shows. Now, I'm not into that whole realm. I don't know all these things, but I hear the, the thing. They'll talk about Ginny Mays and, or, and annuities and I don't, whatever. It's another, but they will say things like seed money, high yield, low yield, coming to fruition, returns, bearing, bearing. All these words are from agriculture. All these words are linked to sowing and reaping. And what it says in the financial world, if you have money and you don't sow it, it just stays what it is. If you sow it, now they're talking about, you know, of course the spirit's different. They're talking about how to get more money. But they sow it and they, it's the same principle. Not, they're not sowing it to God, most likely, but they're sowing it to something. And then it comes back to them and yields them. Now if you just hold on to the money, not only does it does nothing, nothing happens, but inflation eats away at it. Only if you invest it, so that's a form of saying sowing, you give, but you're going to get it back. Now, you know, and, and it's interesting because the Lord spoke of in the realm of finance. And that, you know, someone spoke to me in between service and said, you know, I've heard about sowing and reaping with finances, but you're talking about everything. Yes, it's everything. It's not just finances and, and it's everything. And it, it, but it does include finances, but it's everything. And uh, the other thing is that there are people who preach the, this, this uh, they take one form of this and use it that, hey, the whole thing is give so you can get this and give and God wants you rich. And Listen, that's not the gospel. God wants to bless you. He wants to bless you with the best, what you need, best. He'll bless you. But he does, it also affects the financial realm as well. God used a picture of the financial realm to speak about this when he spoke about the talents. He said, the master goes away. He gives, there's money to his servants. He comes back. The one said, I invested in this and you got this back, you know, tenfold. I invested in this, you got this one. And then the one says, okay, what do you have? He says, no, I didn't do anything because I know you're going to take it from me. If I, if I got interest, you're going to take it. So I just buried it. He said, you wicked servant. He said, you should have sowed it. So the thing is that what you have in life, we're, on this, we're in this world. This is the world that we can sow in. When you're in heaven, we don't know there's any sowing going on. There's sowing now. This is the harvest time. You know, that's the kingdom time. But the only time you can affect what's happening then is now. You know, when you're in heaven, you can't affect the earth. You can't affect your past life. You can't. But now you can affect your future life. But now, so now is the only, this world is made for sowing. Because you can't take anything out of it. Everything's potential until you do it. But when you sow it, when you, when you, you go for it, then it comes back at you. And so, and so starting with finance, I know many people in the Lord who, ha who were in debt. And yet the ones that said, listen, I don't care I'm in debt. I'm always going to give to God first. I'm going to tithe. I'm gonna... And you know what? God always took them out. God always took them out of the debt. God blesses. That's part of it. For your own sake. We don't, I don't say this because I'm, I'm not even looking at what the accounts are. I just know that for your own blessing and for the kingdom, we need to give. You know, we need to give. And God, God does this. Now there's so, now. Yeah, and you don't give to get, although you can give knowing you're going to get and be blessed with that, but you give to bless God because you have and knowing he's going to bless you on top. So what a great thing. God gives you in the first place, then you take what he gave you and you give it and he gives you more on top of it. Everything you have is from God. He wants you to get into the spirit of giving because that's his spirit. He's loving. He's generous. He, God so loved the world that he gave. Who is Messiah? The gift. He's like the seed. And he went into the ground and then bore our salvation. So that's part of our life. Unless a seed there goes, gives up, gives up, gives. He gave and yet he bore life. And now we are his, we are little versions of Messiah. We are living his life. So God establishes this in every area of your life. Give and you will reap. The word in Hebrew, there's, there's only a few words that have come directly to English from Hebrew. And one of them has to do with speaking. And the word is, say it, saper. saper. When he says, it says, the Lord said to Moses, le saper, le saper, to speak. Saper, saper. What's the word? The word we get? Sapphire. The word sapphire. The word sapphire from speaking. Why? Because when you speak, it should be a jewel. 
what you speak, what comes out should be, should be a treasure. You're giving a gift to somebody. You're giving them a sapphire. And it's a seed. So we are to sow or with our words. That's one way in words of, are you sowing words of love, words of encouragement? In your marriage, are you sowing words of encouragement? Are you blessing? Well, my marriage is this. I can't. It doesn't matter. All the more so life. It's not about what they did to you. It's about what the Lord did to you. Do as He did to you. Do to them. So, you also sow when you do acts of love. It says, be zealous for good deeds. Be zealous. We should want to wake up and say, what can I do? What can I, how can I bless people today? How can I bless the world? And, that, and there's another thing, is that is that, well, we don't think about it this way, but there's another area of sowing, which you might not think of, and that is that there are things in your life that are things that God says, well, get rid of it. There might be distractions, might be an idol, might be an attachment, might be a habit, might be a sin, things you hold, or things you hold on to, and it keeps you from being fruitful. Well, you got to get them out of your life, but here's the little, here's the added secret. Sow them. Not to, we just think, okay, I got to get rid of them. But so, don't just let them fall. Just say, Lord, this is a gift to you. I'm giving this up. I'm giving up this Isaac. I'm giving up this thing. Whether it's good or bad, I'm giving it up. Maybe it's something from the past. Sow it to God. It will become seed. He'll bless it. He'll bless that act of sowing. And it actually will produce life. It's not just, so get rid of it because you shouldn't have it or it's, not, it's hurting you. When you sow it, it actually becomes life. God will bless it. I was recently with Paul Wilbur, who, for those who don't know who comes, he comes about usually once a year, incredible worship leader. And we were at a, an event, and it, we were talking about an event that we both did in England, and where we shared, and that was good, but some things weren't quite right about the people who, what happened with the hosting of it. He ended up losing tens of thousands of dollars because they did wrong with him. And he was waiting for them to make it up. And finally he said, okay, I'm releasing it. But he said, I got to do more than that. He said, I'm not just releasing it. I'm giving it to the Lord. I'm so, in other words, I'm taking that money that I never got, but I could get it, but I'm giving it to the Lord. So all of a sudden, it wasn't a loss. It was a gift. Lord, I'm giving this. You bless, the, bless those with it. I'm giving it. I know you're going to bless. And here's the secret. There may be things in your life that were taken from you, or that you lost, or that, you know, or it was a heartbreak, it's gone, was taken, and you're in mourning, you're, even though you don't have but your soul is kind of still in mourning of it, release it, sow it, give it, give it, give it. See, if you give, it's not taken from you anymore. If you give, nobody can take. If you live a life where you're giving, the enemy can't take anything from you because you're giving. And even the things that were taken before in your past, give it to God. Lord, I give it as a gift. I release it. Those people did this to me and they were wrong. I'm giving it any rights I have. I'm giving it to you, Lord. I'm sowing it. God will bless it. It will become life. It will become life. Give, sow all things. Even in your time. Your time is something you have. It's limited. We're all going to run out one time. You can't keep the time forever. Use the time. Give the time away to God. Give it to God's purposes. Parents, sow to your children. Sow love. Sow words of love. There's so many parents who never speak love to their children. And so many, and many of you have had, never had it. Doesn't matter. You're loved now. Sow to your children. Sow and you will reap and they will be blessed. Apply this secret in another way. Here's the secret of the kingdom in another way. That is, what do you want in life? What do you, what do you want to get out of life? Well, you got all the best things from God. But what do you want, and even as you go through this life from the Lord, what do you want? Whatever that is, sow it. Give it instead. You want to be blessed? Okay. You want people to bless you? Bless, focus on blessing others. Whatever you want, bless. Because it says, you reap what you sow. So what you want to get, give. You want blessing, bless people. You want love, forget about being loved by them. That's the way to get, that's the way to get curses on your life. They didn't love me. They didn't love, forget all that. You're not a beggar. You're not, you're not, you're not so desperate, empty. You're a child of God. Give it. 
Give love. Focus on giving love. Forget about being love. You already got love. You all got all the love for God. Give, and you're going to get love on top of it. You want to be recognized by other people? Forget that. Recognize other people. You know, you want to be thanked by people? Forget that. Thank them. You'll be thanked anyway. And God's going to thank you as well. You want grace? You want people to give you grace, some mercy? Give mercy to other people. Give grace to them. Because what you give, you're going to get back. If you are, if you're judgmental and you, you come down on everybody when they mess up, guess what's going to happen in your life? Not good. But even when you're in the midst of a problem and a crisis or a hard time, don't stop sowing. All the more. It's written in Psalm 126, those who sow in tears will reap with rejoicing. So you're in tears. Okay, sow in it and you'll reap with rejoicing. Get in, be unconditional in your giving because you're unconditionally blessed. You don't bless because they blessed you. You don't bless because they didn't bless you. You bless because God blessed you. It doesn't matter. It's unconditional. If they hate me, I still bless. It doesn't mean I'm, it doesn't mean I'm not weak. You're not a doormat. You're like the Lord. You bless because of strength, because of what you have. If you're, you're in prison for your faith, you still bless and you sow in that prison. As again, I know people who did. They sowed to the prison and, pe and they bore life. People got, their, their captors got saved. There was a, a true story, a mailman in California and he, used to, he hated this route because it was always bleak, bleak, bleak landscape. So he decided to do something. He actually, when he would give the letters, as he's driving along, he had a bag of seeds every day. And he'd sow the seeds on the ground. Throw it to the land. Throw it to all the land. He ended up transforming that entire region. Literally. People say, look, this is the, tell the story. Wherever you go, sow the life of God. In the restaurant, don't just tip, sow the love of God. At the waitress, sow the word of God. Sow the gospel. You have to. If you don't, you're not going to see it. If you do, you're going to see it. Yeah. Sow at the bank. Sow at the community. Get into it. All right, so five people won't come to the Lord. The sixth one comes to the Lord. It's going to make your life. And it'll ha if it happens every day, you're going to have a lot of people coming to the Lord. Yeah. Do it. Be loose with it. Be liberal with it in the sense of the good liberal. But just spread, spread it. Good liberal. See, this is the one place you're not to be conservative about. <laughs> with the seed of God. You can change your world. You're in the middle of an argument, sow it. See what happens. In the middle of a crazy situation, sow it. I was on a mission to Russia and it was the last day and we had Russian money and we went to a street, I took us to a street market and they had this book that I really was interested in and I, was, and I asked the price and he told me, I said, the guy's ripping me off, it's too high. I tried to negotiate, you know, we were on the street, you know, and he wouldn't budge. So I walked away, you know, that wise, you know, negotiation, you have to be able to walk away. Next day I'm in the airport leaving Russia and my pockets are filled with Russian money that's going to be worth nothing. And I thought, in a second, it's worth nothing. How foolish I was. Because here, it doesn't matter if it was overpriced. Right now, it's nothing. I've got nothing. It was going to be nothing anyway. I was going to, get, I was going to lose whatever I had. At least if I did it, I'd have a book. Now I have nothing. Well, you see, we're all heading to the airport. We're all leaving this life. Whatever you hold on to, you lose. It'll be worth nothing in heaven. You can't take it with you. Amen. You can't transfer it. There's no out-of-state checks in heaven <laughs> being cashed. But whatever you give away gets converted into heavenly currency. Whatever you give away to the Lord, His purposes, His kingdom, whatever you did for the Lord, you have forever. So don't hold on. Don't be, make the mistake, a foolish mistake of trying to hold on to what you can't keep. Give what you can't hold on to anyway. That's, isn't that wise? And that you might get what you can't lose. This is the world. This world is the world of the harvest. This life is the life of the harvest. This is the time of the harvest. It's to spread the gospel, number one. Spread the word, number, and then sp spread everything good. Give good. Sow to your own life. They're telling you, take the word, sow to your life, and then sow around you. In the world, it's the, they think, you know, the one who has the most at the end, most things wins. No, no, they lose it just like everybody else does. They're going to lose more. If you have every, have a lot, the more you have, the more you lose at the end. If you don't have God. But in God, the one who prevailed, the one who's the winner, is the one who has given the most. I told you the word to sow, what was it? Zarah. Zarah. The word in Hebrew for the seed 
is the word zera. Try it. Almost identical. Zara, zera. Why? It's saying the two are joined together. The zera must be zara. The zera, the seed must be sown or it's wasted. And that which is sown becomes seed and life. Learn, apply, even today and this week, the secrets of the kingdom, the secrets of the sower. This is Jonathan Kahn. Thanks for watching. And the Josiah Manifesto, the ancient mystery and guide for the end times is available everywhere on Amazon, wherever books are sold. God bless you. Shalom.